Back to Share Truth Apply Scripture. I'm Jordan Shambly, joined by Wesley Wildman and Cedra Sarton. If you missed the last segment, you can always go to engagemagazine.net, click on the link that says radio at the top, and there's all of our podcast episodes. And if you haven't listened to us ever before, start at the beginning. There That's, hey, look, <laughs> if you want to make your commute much yeah. more enjoyable, <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, just no. just just plug it well, in. Right? I mean, we're, we're also on this, yeah. we're also on Spotify, hey, yeah. Google Podcasts, mm-hmm. Apple Podcasts. So you can listen to us on any of those. Yeah. And if you just so happen to wonder like what we look like, mm-hmm. and you're you like, go. I bet Why these people are that? beautiful. <laughs> what do they wow. look like? You can go to our YouTube channel. You can watch our podcast. Yeah, and, and hopefully is, you won't be too disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hopefully so not. Well, well, look, we just want to encourage you mm-hmm. to get our content in the hands of young adults and college students because uh, we are really passionate about reaching our generation. Mm-hmm. I'm 30. How old are you? I'm 27. 27. 28. 28. Yeah. We're we're yeah. right around. I mean, we're right in the middle of the millennial uh, group, right? Yeah, exactly. Right yeah. in the middle, and so we're really <laughs> passionate. We understand <laughs> they have some they have some positives, they have some negatives, but we want to reach them. And we want to help them. And so we have this content. And, and likewise, we want to learn from them as well. Mm-hmm. And now we do have teachers and we have um, Sunday school uh, or uh, youth pastors. We have plenty of others, grandparents mm-hmm. that follow our content. But you are our conduit, our avenue to get this content in the hands of young adults and college mm-hmm. students. So help us out with that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just to remind you, if you haven't, uh, if you've forgotten since last segment, this is a, this is a discussion on mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and we felt that it feels weird talking about it, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I think this is a good <laughs> conversation to have, and, and that while we're talking about this is because it's kind of become a hot button topic okay. these days. I think more people are talking about mental health than they have ever before, mm-hmm. um, because I think one, we understand more about it, and two, people can make money off of it. So sure. there's yeah. more books being written on this this topic as well, which we'll get into the ne- in the next episode next week. Stay tuned for that. We're talking about self help. Uh-huh. So there's a little teasy. Teaser well, for you. If, yeah. if you look back, though, a lot of times there was some kind of shame attached to mm-hmm. the idea of having a mental health issue. Mm-hmm. People didn't tend to talk about it. But, and but they didn't do that same when they, somebody had a broke leg or yeah, some other physical. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. They that's didn't something understand. Yeah. you could physically see, mm-hmm. which I guess in, in a lot of ways you can physically see when someone has a mental problem because, you know, it will start to manifest like mm-hmm. a outward. Uh, and I know for me, like I told you guys, that I had anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I, have, I still have trouble sleeping mm-hmm. a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. And that will obviously start to show. And mm-hmm. um, and you will notice, you know, if you look, if you really know somebody, you'll start to notice a change in their personality and their yeah. behavior. And um, mm-hmm. so, like, it can be physical, but, it, like, seeing a broken bone, mm-hmm. that's obvious. We need to fix that. And you, yeah, yeah, you know what to do about it, and, <coughs> and you can't say, oh, that's connected to the character of this person. Whereas yeah. before, when they didn't really know what was going on, they they had no idea whether or not, you know. Yes. So, anyway. Well, yeah. before we get into we do want to discuss how does this spiritually fit into mental health? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, how does spirituality, how does Christianity fit into uh, spiritual mm-hmm. health? We also want to look at how to discuss the importance of seeking help, mm-hmm. counseling, pop potentially medicine mm-hmm. and yeah. how to discuss mental health um, is important mm-hmm. so we're going to get into that before we do I wanted to make a couple connections to tie up the last segment and that's that uh, right for the break uh, we mentioned that mental illness can be brought upon by traumatic events or childhood abuse mm-hmm. yeah oh, so absolutely. that's that's one thing that's one factor to take into consideration when you're telling somebody just to pray and suck it up mm-hmm. that could be a that could be a contributor as well also, too, if these go untreated, uh, I was looking into this, and John Hopkins, uh, professor, I forget his name, but he had a, he had uh, basically did a report, I guess, so to speak, or a response to trans, and, and we'll mention this briefly, and then we'll move on, right. but transgenderism, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. LGBT agenda, that entire <coughs> movement, and all those that are trapped in that lifestyle, they have a twice, they're twice as much more likely to have a mental disorder or a mental health issue up is 80 mm-hmm. percent uh, whereas uh, teenagers are roughly around 40 percent yeah that have a mental health Goodness. disorder so that's one more reason to be that much more sympathetic to the individual mm-hmm. and finding ways to minister to them and kind of working backwards so to speak mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to 
uh, doing this part that we're about to get into. The, the what do we do about yeah. it? How do we minister to them? Uh, how do we get help if mm-hmm. that's for us? How do we do that? Well, we're going to work a little backwards. We've got to understand that there are some other factors into play. We've got to understand what camp are we in here. Are we mm-hmm. talking about something that's self-inflicted or something that is brought upon yeah. by um, something we can't control? Well, and, and I like that you brought up um, the, 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 the something that's out of your control, too. And I, I do think, and I, I think there's been many experts who, have, who would agree with this, that um, – parenting goes into men- the mental Absolutely. health of a child so yeah. much, especially when there's either an absent father mm-hmm. or a father who is not a, a, as good of a man as he should have been. Sure. Um, and, and I mean, e- even if your dad is a great dad, and my dad was a great dad and still is now, um, but even in those cases, like the way you perceive your father and the way that your father relates to you has a really big effect on your mental health, either negatively or positively. Um, so that, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a huge subject probably for another episode. And I would actually love to do an episode on the effect of fathers on children. Um, but, but that it, when, when you're talking about mental health, sometimes this, it, you don't want to pry, you don't want to overstep boundaries, but having a good idea of where the person's coming from, if you're trying to help someone really will inform what you do and what you say and maybe what needs to be repaired in their lives too yeah. um some some people are are oftentimes reaching out for a father figure even if they're not if even if they don't realize it um and that's where a lot of those symptoms come from so i mean it's a good thing to keep in mind um as you're relating to people and even in, when you're assessing your own mental health just uh what where do you come from where are those factors that could have contributed to whatever issue you're facing and that's a good square one yeah. to start from. I will say that if someone does approach you mm-hmm. and someone someone finds that you're someone that they can confide in, mm-hmm. don't be quick to throw out yeah. advice. Yes. Don't just throw out some mm. like advice without knowing like f- the situation. Mm-hmm. Really talk it through with them. So yeah. I will say because I've seen people do it Goodness where yeah. they just throw like this blanket advice over the situation without knowing exactly mm-hmm. everything going on yeah so and, I, yeah. I i sit down and actually talk with that person mm-hmm. before you start like giving them mm-hmm. advice and I'm, I'm one of those people who's always tempted to fix the problem it's, and, and my wife That's will tell you, thing. i mean yeah yeah That's my wife will tell thing. you like immediately like she'll bring up an issue maybe not necessarily she's facing it but somebody else she's facing <laughs> or, or is facing this issue and i'm immediately like okay here's the solution like here's what they need to do and if they just listen to me they would have a great yeah, life yeah, right? yeah exactly well that's not what you need to do like like cedra said like you need to there needs to be a gentle approach you need to be you need to actually know the person and where mm-hmm. they're coming from in order to help them yeah and, and th- regardless on what side of the spectrum you're on when it comes to mental illnesses mm-hmm. or mental health we're better equipped especially if we're those trying to help someone but it, but even more so the person that's dealing with the issue mm-hmm. we're better equipped regardless of what end of the spectrum you are when we're steeped in god's truth absolutely and mm-hmm. we're and we had that active relationship with him mm-hmm. i know that while i haven't experienced any of this before there are other issues or sin in my life that um that if I hadn't had that active relationship with Christ, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been able to overcome. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's the same way with these other mental health issues. Even if it's self-inflicted or something that you can't, that you need a professional help with mm-hmm. or medicine for, then I believe that you need to, either way, we need to be connected with Christ. We, you know, he's the mm-hmm. vine, we're the branch, and we need to be connected with him. We need to be steeped in God's truth. And steeped in God's truth about who we are and our our identity in mm-hmm. him is important so i I guess we're moving into the Mm -hmm. to the the ministry aspect or Mm -hmm. how do we respond and what do we do if we're the ones stuck in it but before we get into that a little more give us a couple ministries there cedra that can yeah um i I will say that if you are and this is coming from someone that has dealt with anxiety and depression please seek Mm -hmm. help find a trusted usually older person better Mm -hmm. that that has a little more wisdom than you Find someone to talk to, and if you don't know where to go, mm-hmm. uh, you could go to, I have, I have a few websites here, um, but the American Association of Christian Counselors, yeah. so that's aacc.net, uh, or Teen Challenge, teenchallengeusa.org, or Parenting Today's Teens, or you can go to heartlightministries.org, and if you didn't catch all of those, you can go to engagemagazine.net and yeah. re-listen to the podcast, but we'll uh, try to put these in the, in, mm-hmm. the no- in the notes so you can get to them easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and I, I do think too like yeah you, like you said what we're leading into the that um that uh th- where spirituality intersects with mental health and i think this mm-hmm. is important because there's a lot of people out there probably thinking well i'm really supposed to be concerned with the gospel right i'm right. supposed to be concerned with preaching the gospel winning souls for heaven um, mental health seems to be a distraction. Yeah, like, it's yeah. just one of those things that, and a lot of people think this, that the devil throws out there, oh, you know, mental well-being, you need to be concerned about that, and it distracts you from the mission. Well, I don't know if that's actually true, because you look at who designed the mind, right. you know? Who designed the mind? God mm-hmm. did. Um, we, you, you have to understand that, I mean, while there is a difference between the spiritual world and the physical world, they're a part of one creation that God called good, yeah. right? And there's a design that goes into that, and there's a, there's an interconnectedness there. The spiritual and the physical world Most touch definitely. each other and affect each other in every point. So what's going on in your spirit is going to affect you mm-hmm. physically and mentally. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. God doesn't <clears throat> care more about the spiritual world than he does about the physical world. If he did, he would not have created the physical world. Right. It's not a lesser thing. Right. Now, so that means we need to take care of it mm-hmm. and we need to we need to understand that it's important it's important to god but also it's a part of loving our neighbor yeah and you're right it is exactly right mm-hmm. it's definitely part of loving our neighbor and it, and for some it also for someone that does view it as a distraction or a or a wall or a barrier it's something that we have to deal with <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's a reality yeah. and it's important for us to care enough about that to uh, to show people that we care it's what the, the so, you know. Someone said that um, we've heard this before. Nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. Mm-hmm. And so the <laughs> idea of listening and over helping them overcome sometimes just listening mm-hmm. and being there helps them overcome that barrier so that you can share mm-hmm. the gospel and so that they can come to faith in Christ. So that uh, there is there may be a distraction, but you have to it's the distraction that you have to overcome using God's word, mm-hmm. using patience, gentleness, mm-hmm. the fruits of the spirit, love, mm-hmm. kindness. Those are the type of things. You know, I know we're coming up on the end of the program. A couple things I wanted to conclude sure. with on my end, and mm-hmm. that's that remember that the church was responsible for building the first hospital. Well, it was yeah. the, the, the church's response. It was, the, it was their yeah. concept, their idea, right? Mm-hmm. So just as we started then caring about pe- people's physical needs mm-hmm. and mental needs, we need to continue to do that to be an example. And two, remember when somebody has a mental or uh, me- a mental disorder, a mental need, mm-hmm. more even pagans mm-hmm. will more than likely go yeah. to a pastor or a Christian for counseling and yeah. help. <laughs> so we need to always be prepared to be able to um, help out, listen, be patient. We're not asking everybody to become a doctor, but we need to do these things as Christians and, and keep our yes. mind clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and lo- again, look at look into the scriptures and see what God's design for humanity is. Um, he tells us to be good fathers, good mothers. He tells us to love our neighbor. He tells us whatever is pure, whatever is right, whatever is holy, whatever is noble. Think about those things. Fill your mind with those things. So mental health, even though if it's not necessarily a primary focus of the Bible, there is, it's, it's present there. Yeah. Following God will affect your mental health. And you're being a good steward of the thing that God gave you. So that's what we want to leave you with with um, on this program. So again, next week, we're going to kind of continue a little bit on this discussion, but a bit more specifically on self-help. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for listening to Share Truth by Scripture.